EB1A, which is the extraordinary ability criteria. Now, um, as Sang mentioned, there is um, a non-immigrant category, which is the O1, which bears very close resemblance to an EB1A. However, the EB1A is the king of all green cards, as we like to call it, because it's one of the highest uh, green cards accor uh, accorded by the U.S. government to individuals. Uh, let me be, uh, you know, let me just share this with you. The U.S. government loves to bring in people who add value to uh, uh, to the economy, who add value to uh, U.S.'s um, sort of uh, prosperity, et cetera. So it is a great option for individuals who have, who have achieved a level of distinction in their field. And when I talk about distinction, I'm really talking about being in the in the top one to five percent of your field. You need to have a demonstrated racket of outstanding accomplishments, which could be in the form of media articles. Um, any papers or articles you may have published in journals or magazines which are widely read in your industry, uh, there must be recognition and prominence in your field of expertise. You could have recommendation letters from experts in the field who are well known, who would talk about your original contributions to the field. Uh, again, I have to reiterate the national and international importance of the work you're doing because ultimately that's what sets you apart from the general population in top terms of what you're contributing to the society, to the, to the industry to be basically, uh, you know, be considered as being one of the experts in your field. Uh, you need to be consistent in your achievements. So if you did something 10 years ago, uh, you can't really rely on that in order to get a green card now, as long as you've maintained consistency and you've grown in your field, you absolutely can use it. And your contributions have to have to be considered being of major significance. And when we talk about major significance, they need to be groundbreaking. They need to sort of lay the foundation of really big things in that particular industry. Now, there are people who have patents who, you know, uh, and they come to us all the time. Hey, I have a couple of patents. Can we go ahead and apply for an EB1A? Unfortunately, just having a patent in your name doesn't do it. You need to show what is the commercial impact of that patent. Has it been acquired by a big entity? Is there a possibility that this patent is going to yield in millions and billions of dollars in revenue uh, for a particular company if you were to license it to them? So, uh, and then we also have very unique individuals who come to us for EB1As. We've had magicians, we've had people who are CEOs who have just taken their company from point A through point, you know, to point Z, and 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 they're doing phenomenally well, and they're widely spoken about in business magazines, etc. So, the more visible you are in your industry, the more recognition you have in your industry, the higher your chances are of getting an EB1A green card. I do want to caution you, it's not one size fits all. It's a totality of circumstances. It's a totality of evidence that is considered by USCIS in an EB1A. And these are definitely the hardest green cards to obtain an approval on. Not impossible, but definitely very hard. Again, we also have physicians who come to us saying that, hey, I, I'm on an expert panel and I, I, I kind of uh, I've been invited to essentially uh, work on uh, um, research uh, towards uh, finding a cure for a certain disease, et cetera. That always is something that needs to be explored further. So when in doubt, please consult a qualified immigration expert uh, who would be able to tell you whether you have a viable case or what else can you add to your portfolio or your profile to make it stronger. So even if you can't apply for it today, you may very well be eligible for it two or three or four years down the line. And again, this is the fastest way to get a green card in the United States because there's no labor certification process involved. And for the worldwide category, the priority date, which is your place in the uh, line to get a green card is usually very much ahead of the rest of the world. Now we 